The enemy promotes religion. Jesus promotes military, kingdom business, and operation. And a divine order where everything flows. If you've never been in a military, you may not understand that in a full way. But if you've ever been in a military, you will. The importance of going through boot camp. God brings us through a boot camp process. And this boot camp process is so you come to the end of you. So that your way of thinking has changed. Not many people like boot camp. I sure didn't. I couldn't stand it. Of course, I got ill there, but hallelujah. But I realized the importance of it afterwards. It's amazing you don't realize the importance when you're going through it, you know. But after you've gone through it, it's like, gosh, man. If I would have had another attitude during that time, things would have been a lot different. The Holy Spirit tries to get us to a place where you and I are flexible, movable, bendable, where he can use me and you in any circumstance, no matter what it is. Paul said, I became many things that many could be saved. But there's a process, an operation, and a training that comes along with all of these things. So we see here that it says war broke out in heaven. In other words, there was a military. That war has to do with military. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Two different armies. Army of light and army of darkness. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil. And Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You know, people still, some people still don't believe in the devil or demons. They, they don't still believe that there's influence. Or that there's actually two worlds. There's a world that you see and a world that you don't see. I saw an interview this morning with a gentleman, I just happened to, searched some stuff out, and uh, he was actually a very uh, intellectual individual, high in, in finances, and he got hired onto a job of overseeing banks, and come to find out, he was a, du a Dutch gentleman, and come to find out, he didn't realize that he had this job in, that he had been assigned to was a tremendous responsibility of multiple banks globally. And, uh, and so they had invited him to some of their events. And they were like services, but it was perverse services. He realized that it was a Luciferian agenda that these individuals were involved with. And as he began to get further and further, he realized that there was about 8,500 people who ruled the earth through the banking system, who caused chaos, financed terrorists, all kinds of stuff. And he was going to these rituals with them. There weren't sacrifices yet, but they were like services. And he just thought of it as a joke because he was making so much money. He didn't really believe in any of this stuff. He just thought that these perverse things that were going on and at these meetings and teachings and whatever were just, he didn't really believe in it. Until he went to an event that broke him. They sacrificed children. And that broke him. He no longer could handle it any longer. He realized the reality of what was going on. He realized that there was another world in, another, in a world that we live in. And it was ruled by a Luciferian. They were Satan worshipers that ruled this earth. And he wanted to let the world know, even though he feared for his life, he didn't care. He couldn't live this way. 
and the reality to him was that that was real. A reality of another world, another military, another belief system that was true. And they actually ruled the earth through the banking system. You know, people really do not understand the Federal Reserve. It's not has nothing to do with our government. It has to do with the world government. They won't even allow us to audit them. But yet they make their money off of lending money, causing chaos, and then financing the chaos, and then financing the rebuilding of it. Do you know that every paycheck you get the taxes out of your paycheck called income tax goes to the Federal Reserve to pay the interest for the country it doesn't go to anything of building roads or anything else it goes to pay the interest that's how they control everything that's why they you will never get into a place where there's a trade system because they can't control it it will always be a financial system or something to do with finances for credit. That's how credit came about. Because the economy wasn't doing good and there was not enough money in the economy for people. So the way to raise the economy was to put people in debt and give them charge. But it raised the economy but it didn't change anything of the debt. It made us more in debt. See, that's how the enemy works. He works to get you in debt, then you serve him. How many people in the world are slaves to debt? How many countries are slaves to debt? This is the operation of Satan's kingdom. It is a reality. It's true. There are many people who say that their believers still don't believe in the satanic rituals and abducting of children. It's amazing. 300,000 children a year, all of a sudden missing. This is real. In verse 10, <clears throat> Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame. Everyone say overcame. overcame. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Again, war broke out in heaven. That means that there were fighters. There were warriors. And this is all talking about right here. It says they overcame. They overcame by the blood. They overcame by the testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Wow. These are warriors. This is a, this is a pathway of a warrior. In the kingdom of God, there's citizens, there's soldiers, and there's warriors. There's differences. We are not born again as a warrior. We are trained as a warrior. Many reject this calling, not willing to pay the price. So others end up fighting for those that are not willing to pay the price. instead of fighting for their position and others. Where there is no fight, there is no victory. Where there is no victory, there is no advancement. That's plain and simple. You can play religion all day long. You can even come to church. You can come to church 14 times a day and still not become a warrior because there's something important about being a warrior. You must learn. You must learn, you must learn, you must learn. In learning, you must have understanding. Because there's a lot of people that learn, 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 and never get understanding. In 1 Peter chapter 5, pathway of a warrior.
In verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves, what? Under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It says, be sober, be alert, right? Be vigilant, be consistent. So that means that you and I must be in a steady position of alert and being consistent. I think that's one of the things where people falter. Because without consistency, you cannot be alert. It's impossible. Without consistency every day. Remember the whole process and everything that God is bringing us through as a pathway of a warrior is to come to the not only the end of ourselves, but not use human precepts, but eternal precepts. We're to be living, uh, as we talked before, a higher plane of existence. In Proverbs 2. Hallelujah. Proverbs 2 and verse 1. Pathway of a warrior, that means that there's a pathway of training. Would you read it with me in verse 1? My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you. In other words, receive my words if you're willing to accept my training. And treasure those things that I'm imparting in you. In other words, put them to practice. So that you incline your ear to what? Wisdom. wisdom. Without wisdom, you cannot be a warrior. And apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for what? Discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures... Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. I don't know any warrior, warrior that does not fear the Lord. Anyone that is not practicing or established in the fear of the Lord cannot be a warrior. These are qualifications. And find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good thing. Kings at the, in the Old Testament were supposed to be examples of warriors. It was a pathway of, a warrior is a pathway of training. It's the first, it, it first starts with building character. Building character. In other words, he's saying, look, if you're willing to receive these things, you're willing to learn from me. If you're willing to learn, you're going to hear. You'll put things into practice. There will be a change of heart. You will want, desire wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment all the time. Your mind won't be drifting constantly towards this worldliness. You will always be kingdom focused. Kingdom focused focused in everything and the purpose is that as we're building in integrity accountability credibility we begin to earn respect but if you can't sow respect you can't receive respect amen and it's not respect in an area of anything that you and i do it's respect of his presence always People, it's not about just respecting the person. We respect the character of that person. Amen? And Matthew 11. A warrior has to do a training. If you're not willing to pay the price for training, there's always positions in the kingdom that are not warriors or soldiers. It's associated with citizenship. But I believe each and every one of us has been an impartation for a desire to more, be more and be 
a, a leader in some sort. Why? Because we want to lead people out of hell. We want to lead people out of darkness. In Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus gave the example. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In verse 29, he said, take my yoke upon you and what? Learn, Learn from me. Jesus was the master warrior. He was the greatest example as a warrior. For I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In other words, come to me. Come to the throne and not the phone. Learn to get your answers from him. And confirm with leaders. There should be an area of gentleness, humbleness, and peacefulness in you. Always wanting to learn in a surrender state of being. You get into a position where you truly trust and you're obedient no matter what. You don't question. Questioning always brings reasoning. And reasoning is a guillotine of, taste, of faith. In Deuteronomy 31, Can you imagine if Jesus showed up in front of you right now and he asked you to do something, would you say, well, well, why? <laughs> why? Do you uh, <laughs> remember John the Baptist's uh, father, what happened to him, right? As the high priest, an angel of the Lord wanted to go tell him. And he questioned the angel. Well, he couldn't speak until John was born. <laughs> he asked him why. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 31. Yeah, man. Zechariah couldn't speak. I think it was Zechariah. Hallelujah. 31, everybody there? In verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and little ones, and the stranger who is within your gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to what? Fear the Lord, your God, and carefully observe all the words of this law, and that your children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord, your God, as long as you live in the land which you cross the Jordan to what? Possess. Possess. Now, this is powerful. Learning to hear or learning to fear the Lord. We are learning to, in this relationship, to reverence, honor, and respect the Lord. Again, a position of a warrior is it's constant. There is no question there about that. There's a reverence and respect and honor and of fear in the Lord in everything we do, in every decision, in everything. That's a part of our training. Learning to fear the Lord. You cannot cross over to possess without a fight. Amen? Amen? You can't possess without a fight. And you can't have victory, and you can't even fight without the fear of the Lord. Unless you're fighting for your own life, then you're not fighting for the kingdom. And Philippians chapter 2. Pathway of a warrior. Oh, yes. In verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who is the master warrior, who being 
in a form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation. No reputation. Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. I want you to understand that God begins to train us so we are no longer living as an, an area of a reputation. It's not what people think about you. It's what he thinks about you. And being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself. The greatest warrior humbles. And became obedient to the point of what? Death. Death. Even to the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every in heaven and on earth and, and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, this comes into a place where we are no longer concerned with reputation, but we are servant to all. A warrior is a servant to all. In humility and obedience and to the point of death. In other words, a warrior gets to the place where he would rather die than disobey. He would rather die than offend the Lord. He would rather die than break covenant. Does everybody understand that? Rather die than go back. That's the place God wants to get to for each and every one of us. In Psalm 119, 71. I know people that used to say, I'd rather die than go back to jail. Amen. Then do the right things. <laughs> Some people need to get to the point where I'd rather die than break covenant with God. Psalm 119 and verse 71. What does it say? It is good for me that I have been what? Afflicted. Afflicted. Oh, yes. That I may what? That I may what? Learn. That I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins and gold and silver. So you will be afflicted. It's a part of training. It's called suffering. Everybody goes through affliction. Everybody goes through stuff. Although some people go through stuff that aren't even supposed to go through stuff. The enemy just comes up and says, you're struggling, and they agree with it, and they're struggling, they really ain't struggling for nothing. Because they haven't discerned the voice yet. Afflictions are learning opportunities. I'm going to say it again. Afflictions are learning opportunities where you and I are always looking to see what we can learn out of it. Not according to human precepts, but kingdom precepts. In Proverbs 9. So there's always an exchange of human precepts and kingdom precepts. In Proverbs 9, 9. I guess we'll start at 7. 9, 7. Let's speak it. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase learning. How many of y'all know that correction is, cor is instruction? Mm. See, so many times people get into a place where when there is correction or instruction, they take it as offense. That person can never fulfill that position until that is dead. Does everybody get this? This is important. 
Because God chastens those he loves. He gives us counsel, correction, and direction for our protection. And it's a part of the training so that we can grow. Does everybody get that? So if a person gets offended, every time they're corrected, they're always, they're, they're not seeing according to kingdom pre, pre, precepts or seeing through human precepts. They cannot become a warrior until that's dead. They may be a soldier, but they will not become a warrior. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 9 and verse 7. We already did this, right? Okay, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied and your years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you will bear it alone. Nice. <laughs> See, in this place we want to be able, to, they, they should be able to, he says, teach just men. There's an area of justice. We're to, in, in, in this, justice is an area of justice and righteousness where you're right standing with God in everything that we do. Increase in learning. Everyone here should want to increase in learning more about the Lord, more about kingdom business and everything that we do. In Psalm 89, Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. In verse 11, Psalm 89, verse 11, let's speak it. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours, the world in all its fullness. You have founded them, the north and the south, you have created them. To bar and harmon, rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, and high as your right hand. Righteous and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Righteousness and justice and mercy and truth are to be learned. Not only are they to be learned, but they are to be defended. So you and I as a warrior are defenders of the throne of God. As a warrior. And this is the area where God wants to get us to an area of how our thought patterns change now. We are defenders of the throne of God. We are defenders of righteousness and justice and mercy and truth. In Ephesians chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. Ephesians 4, verse 20. Again, he expresses here, he says, but you've not so learned Christ. In other words, you rejected the learning, the training process. You've limited yourself to just a, either a citizen or a soldier and not a warrior. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ, that you put off what? Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. True righteousness and holiness. In this area... So many times, God wants to get us to a place where we are dismantling, in a place of dismantle. Dismantle, dethroning, <laughs> and exchanging the old. Always in a dismantle, dethroning, and an exchanging of our old man. In this place, many people where he says, you've not so learned Christ is because they quit receiving Counsel, correction, and direction. So in that, they're no longer dismantling. Uh, they're no longer dethroning. And they're no longer exchanging the old for the new. Where there, again, is 
reasoning and justification, and that is self-protection, or what we call protection of self. We should get to a place where we are able to see both worlds. Amen? Amen. What does he say? He says, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, right? And John 14 Again, many are learning, but not understanding. John 14 and verse 6. Jesus answered and said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. Profound. Here is the learning the function and maintaining the function of each chamber of the tabernacle. That is the pathway of a warrior. The first chamber, are you ready for this, is ripping the garment of self-righteousness, entitlement, Lost pride and carnality. It is ripping the garments. It's ripping the garments of self-righteousness, entitlement, lust, pride, and carnality. This is a function in other words we must learn the functions and maintain the functions of each chamber of the tabernacle that is the first chamber ripping the garments of self-righteousness entitlement lost pride and carnality the second chamber is exchanging your presence for the holy presence of the holy spirit there's an exchange of presence in the second chamber. Where you're putting actually on holy priestly garments. In this chamber there, because there's an exchange of presence, and there's an exchange of garments, there's a desire of submitting service to the king. This is kingdom business. This is where a complete change has come around, where everything to you is about being about the father's business. And worship to the father. In the second chamber, in this process, you are no, you are no longer eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're rejecting it. You're eating from the tree of life. Because without this, you cannot even access the third chamber as a warrior. Is everybody with me? So again, the second chamber. What is the function of the second chamber? Well, it is an exchange of your presence for the holy presence of the Holy Spirit. It's exchange of garments and a desire to service to the king. It's a place of worshiping the Father, eating from the tree of life, and rejecting the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is not a one-time event. This is a lifetime event. Does everybody get this? See, many people can go from one place right back to the other quickly. It only takes one wrong choice to move us out of position. One wrong decision. The third chamber, the function, is that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. In other words, it is the ability... The ability, are you ready, to discern dimensional battles. It is the ability to discern dimensional battles. You cannot discern dimensional battles unless you have a constant dominion over your soul and your flesh.
So in this, discerning a dimensional balance is the reality of taking possession of dimensional territories for the king. You are battling. You are fighting. You are in prayer battling and fighting. Wherever you go, you are claiming. You are claiming that territory for the king. Is everybody okay? Take in possession of dimensional territories for the king and the kingdom. Able to learn and train. Now, of course, of imitating Christ, the great warrior. But first, if you can't, if you're not in a status of conquering yourself, you can't conquer anything else. Again, many people have touched it but never fulfilled it. There's a difference between a citizen, a soldier, and a warrior. 1 Timothy 3. These are pathways to a warrior. The word tells us that the path is difficult and narrow, isn't it? I'm going to use this as a, it says, this is a faithful saying, if a man desires a position of a warrior, because a bishop is a leader, and so is a warrior, he desires a good thing. Everybody should have a desire to want to lead. But if you can't first start to follow, amen, how can you lead? Amen. God will never put you in a position of leading unless you have been faithful in following. Verse 2. A warrior must then be blameless, a husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, and able to learn. Not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous. One who rules his own house well. Having his children in submission with, the, with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own temple or his own house, how will he take care of the church or things of God? Not a novice. Lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a what? Good testimony among those who are outside lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil in other words he is able to rule his own house he submits it's someone that's submissive no matter what goes on rules he's submissive to rules he's got good attitude motives desires thoughts not prideful and the testimony, it does, when it says in a good testimony, means the testimony or witnesses of others that affirm your position. Does everybody get that? You may think you have to earn that position, but ask everybody else around you whether they think that you earned that position. Hello? Again, if you can't, <laughs> you can't lead unless you first are able to follow rules. Submission, authorities. Why? Because then you gain trust among your peers as someone that can be trusted. Trusted. You wouldn't want someone to lead you or that you couldn't trust. Amen? Does everybody understand that? I mean, you know, some of us have gone to places where we have bosses, man, we don't trust for nothing. But unfortunately, if we want to get a paycheck, you got to trust God. To trust him. <laughs> Amen. You got to just trust God. In this, we're not going ac according to human precepts. We're going to heavenly precepts, kingdom precepts. Does everybody understand that? This is where the exchange is constantly at. You can know, and listen, if your presence is still there, then you're a human precepts. If your presence is removed, kingdom precepts. 2 Timothy chapter 2. It 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace and the plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Again, are you going to receive something from someone that's not the example? No. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Again, there are many soldiers, but not many warriors. No one engaged in a warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules, Rules guidelines, regulations, kingdom principles. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Amen. Many are learning but not understanding. Enlisted as a soldier. First for training. You are not a warrior. You're not born a warrior. You are trained to be a warrior. So you are a citizen. Then you become a soldier. Then you advance to a warrior. Become a warrior. <laughs> you got to compete. <laughs> According to the rules, right? You got to follow everything no matter what's going on. Again, the justice and righteousness is the throne of the Lord. That means you're connected to the throne of the Lord as a warrior. Everything around you is associated with righteousness and justice. Does everybody get that? See that? You are connected to the throne of God as a warrior. One of the things as a warrior, you're able to discern the timing of God. You are not pushed into anxiousness. You are willing to suffer the weight till God moves and not you. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Pathway of a warrior. Jesus, the greatest example as a, as a warrior. <clears throat> In verse 7, please. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of who? God and not us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not dis in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death. The pathway of a warrior. For Christ's sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Wow. Completely dependent on his power and his word, allowing death of selfish desires and our will to no longer have access. So what you're doing is you're actually shutting access. It's our responsibility to shut access. Why? Because when you do not shut access, your true identity begins to diminish. And that's what the enemy always tries to do, tries to diminish your identity. Because the word says, as a man thinks, so he is, right? If he can diminish your identity of who you are and push you back to just being a citizen or a soldier, and take you out of position of warrior, or even put you back into carnality where everything is associated with human precepts instead of kingdom precepts. That is the job of the powers of darkness, to diminish your identity. It's no longer a reality of who you are. You fall from who you are to hope in who you are. 
There's a difference between constant and future. You know, there's something that we hear all the time. Paul said, to die is to gain. To die is to gain. To die is to what? <laughs> Again, you must think like a warrior and not hope for a warrior. You are willing to pay the price and not change. Immovable. 2 Corinthians 11. Warriors come in all time, types of shapes, sizes, <laughs> male, female. Doesn't matter. There are warriors that are young. There are warriors that are old. There are warriors that you didn't think are warriors. But man, when the door shuts, they are warriors. People try to be warriors out in front of everybody else. But it starts behind closed doors. Second Corinthians 11. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but what I do, I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are what? False warriors. <laughs> False apostle, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Wow. Paul says again, let no one think that me as a fool, otherwise at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. But Paul was always exposing those areas of false apostles, false prophets. See, there should be a, a constant life of self-examination. It doesn't stop. Paul cuts off and exposes false doctrine, apostles, soldiers, and warriors. Why? Because the constant removal of human precepts, exchanging them for kingdom precepts. Kingdom thinking, not carnal thinking. Ephesians 5. Pathway of a warrior. Therefore be imitators of God, as dear children in verse 1. Imitators of God. Imitators of God. You know, in the, in the area of reality of knowing your identity... You know, people... Sometimes I run across people and... Uh, because they hear my last name or whatever, I say, oh, man, hey, brother, we're, you're Italian? Man, we need to, like, stick together. No. I'm stuck to him, not to culture, color, nationality. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stuck to nothing else. I am stuck to him. You cannot be a warrior if you're still stuck to culture. You can't. It won't work. That's why we need to cut loose from all of these things. It says be imitators of God. That's from above. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering in a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. 
For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, be partake, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For the, see, let me share something with you. A warrior, don't give a hoot. He's not concerned about people's feelings. He's concerned about removing darkness and deception. That means you don't go up to every single one and say, yo, man, you got a devil. You know, you use wisdom on it. Amen? You expose in that self-examination. Listen, there's nothing wrong with going to somebody else and saying, man, what do you see in me in the last, you know? Why? Because you're looking to change. You're not looking to protect. If you're not willing to do this, then you're willing to protect. And you can't change. Oh, hallelujah. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is even shameful if to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem in the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but what? Understand. Understand what the will of the Lord is. In other words, people are learning but not understanding. Imitators, exposers. You know, think about this. Da King David, Samson, and many others fell from, war becoming, from maintaining their position as a warrior because of lust. Saul fell hit from his position because of pride. Many fall from position because of the precepts of carnality, not maintaining the precepts of kingdom business. One of the vital things is <laughs> sanctification. Sanctification. Come out from among them and be separate. Sanctification is priority. Without sanctification, there is no divine order. It just won't work. Again, it must be a, self, a life of self-examination. Christ must be always in your face. He must be always in your face. No longer human love, but divine love. It's different. Human love has to do with lust. Divine love. One of the things God tries to get us to the places is the warriors and see what he sees. And we've talked about that before. How many of y'all know if you see what he sees, you can, he can trust you? No, there's no, no, we hate compromise, complacency, and laziness. Again, there's no culture, no cultural things. It doesn't matter. We navigate according to the instruments of the word. We navigate according to the instruments of the word. Not according to the instruments of yourself. Or your needs. Or your wants. We navigate according to the instruments of the word. <laughs> In Colossians 3, and we'll close here. Pathway of a warrior. Are you willing to pay the price? Fulfill each function of the chamber. Again, each chamber has another level of death. You know that, right? I don't have to tell you that. Again, there are many citizens, many soldiers, but not many warriors. There's a lot of wannabes, but not willing to be. Colossians 3 and verse 1, let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, 
where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, your minds, and the things above, and not on earthly. In other words, make that constant exchange of human precepts for kingdom precepts. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died. They wouldn't say, I'm dead. <laughs> when Christ, who is our life, this is powerful. You died and your life is in Christ. It's hidden in Christ right now. But when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Because you don't have a life. Your life is in him. When he appears, so will you. <laughs> Therefore put to death, verse 5, your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetous, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you are, yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one, uh, to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and they have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore is the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, even of anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do so. But above all these things, put on what? Love. Love from where? Above. Amen? Love from God, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all Wisdom, because without wisdom you won't make it. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In other words, you no longer labor for you. You labor for him. And no matter where you are, everything is labor unto him. Why? Because it is a pathway of a warrior if you're willing to go through the training. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that you raise up warriors. Bring us to another dimension. Bring us to another level. Bring us to another arena of death. Help us to be continued self-examining and ask that your face will be in front of our face. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.